esta semana tuve la gran oportunidad de volver a hablar con Alfonso Albaiza, un diseñador acá de Miami que ahora dirige la operación de diseño para todo el mundo de la Infinity, la división de lujo de la Nissan. Así que es una entrevista larga, la vamos a presentar en dos partes. La primera aquí en este segmento y después ya continuamos en el siguiente. Así que vamos a escuchar lo que nos dijo eh, Alfonso Albaiza sobre su influencia al haber crecido aquí en Miami. Cómo ve el mundo de, de diseño, la, la industria de los autos, la competencia con los japoneses, los coreanos y los americanos que están avanzando eh, después de la gran crisis que sufrieron en el año 2007, 2008, 2009 y ahora están en gran recuperación y compitiendo contra las uh, firmas uh, europeas y las asiáticas como es la Infinity, en la cual Alfonso Albaiza es el director global de diseño. Vamos a escuchar la entrevista. So now we're uh, talking with Alfonso Albaiza, the new uh, executive design director for Infinity. How are you, Alfonso? Uh, very good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. I was very happy when I saw the announcement. We met a couple of years ago in Detroit in the auto show over there. And uh, you being originally from Miami, and we are based here in Miami, so I thought, uh, what a great story, because, I mean, obviously you deserve it. Uh, but uh, another great example of what people can do when they put themselves to their passion. Mm. Yeah, um, thank you. I'm also very honored to have this new job and uh, also very honored to be from Miami. Uh, the Latin community is uh, really my foundation, even though I have a American accent. I am still 1,000% Cuban, but uh, like many of my cousins and uh, people of my generation yeah and um, obviously that that was an important part in your uh, in your work in what you do today it's a huge influence to have some other culture into your life when you were growing up and all that like the things Miami obviously is a very colorful place a lot of uh, culture from different parts of the world so what that was a very important in your um, what, what, what what you made you what you become today Oh, uh, very much because, um, as you mentioned, Miami is an interesting city because it's extremely multicultural. Maybe from from the satellite view, it looks like very Latin, um, with only a, maybe a small uh, American contingency. But actually, yeah, we also speak English, right? <laughs> uh, maybe within the Latin community, there are very, there's many, many different stories. Uh, many different experiences and uh, I think that when you're designing a car or anything really you you get inspired by achievements of, of people and discovery and new learning and I think a place like Miami is very rich for this because not only do you have a very strong art community but you have a very strong flow of, of Europeans, South Americans, Americans everyone coming and and uh kind of sharing experiences so as an artist i think it's a super good city to be in. yeah it's a very live place right in every in every set i mean it, it, it fits all your senses like you what you smell when you see what uh, what you touch all the colors and all that mm. So, Alfonso, uh, let me ask you something now. Um, we met, as, as, as I said, when uh, you were head of the, of the design group for Infinity for the Americas. But now, as a, as a bigger role in the company, what are the challenges now? I mean, uh, the, the auto industry is moving incredibly fast. Uh, today, just today, we, the, this week, they announced the Total Quality uh, Awards. And, uh, and you see the Americans, the American cars coming back really strong. So. A few years ago, I think when we talked, uh, we were talking about the Koreans, and now we're talking now again uh, about the Americans doing so well. What are the new challenges for, in design uh, for new cars in Finley? Um, well, I think that the uh, Americans, like you say, have made a, a huge move forward. Uh, I have to compliment them on the, their ability to to bring in new products and to create a very consistent uh, message and uh, a lot of very successful products, and uh, General Motors as well, I think. Um, for Infinity, I think the issue is a little different in the sense that uh, we're a kind of new company, in essence, but we have brought uh, member, key members from uh, different companies, from Audi, uh, Johan, uh, yeah. uh, the, the Nishin, 
uh, has really brought us some very powerful vision for how to rebuild infinity, uh, how to understand what is the meaning of premium, what is the meaning of exclusivity. And I think uh, exclusivity, which is very interesting as an artist, is a kind of rarity. So I think what you're going to see in infinity is that we're going to try to understand uh, and execute this sense of rarity, this sense of when uh, also storytelling, because uh, we are, we want to be the fourth premium brand, as maybe you've heard in some of our announcements. Yes. And uh, the three being the German three. And what the opportunity for us is the uh, German three excel in execution, a super good detailing, uh, but the kind of slightly cold uh, Maybe this is the German culture thing, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we want to have a much more Latin blood, uh, much more the, the feeling that the heart drives the brain. Uh, so we won't sacrifice intelligence, but we want to make sure that we capture a very passionate, sculptural, uh, provocative product. So I think you're going to see uh, some new products coming very soon and also some show cards that are going to show you this new uh, sense of passion in our in our cards. So I think that that area is not really expressed too much today. So even though many car companies are doing much better, I think there's still a lot of room for companies like Infinity to create our own world. Yeah. And that's what we, we want to be as a kind of seductive alternative. Yeah. And you were we were mentioning that uh, pretty soon we're gonna start seeing some uh, some new models, and that's uh, I guess technology has allowed you to work much faster. And you were talking about show cars and all that. Um, so what what that's another big challenge, right? Because competition is moving fast too. Yeah. So the, that's what actually makes life very exciting as a car designer now. It used to be when I started 25 years ago. Uh, about five years to design a car and build it and make it. And now that's becoming three years. And also technology is allowing us to react so quickly. So even though the, the time is shorter, also our ability to react up until the last minute has increased. So it's actually, in a sense, quite freeing. Of course, the pressure of reduced schedule is, is intense. <laughs> yeah. But um, actually, uh, I think cars will become more spontaneous, is my, my dream, is that the, the car is a mirror of culture, really. Absolutely, yeah. If you look back in the 50s with the, the fins and the, all these kind of rocket tail lamps, it was because of the, the United States, the Americans dreamed of uh, rockets and supersonic uh, outer space travel. So we, we, the jet age was our cultural dream and the cars reflected it. I think now it's uh, maybe a little less clear what our cultural dream is, but, um, but because the car is quicker to develop, we can be closer to what the dream of the public is. Yeah. In the past, there was a big gap. Again, because five years to develop the car is a huge time. The culture has changed so quickly that you can make a car and it comes out, it's not relevant anymore. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're much more connected to the customer now. Yeah, I don't know if you had a chance to see uh, this week, last week, uh, the Lamborghini uh, unveiled the new Egoista. It looks like a transformer to me, I think. <laughs> Talking about cult, pop culture and uh, connected to the cars, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, I think, uh, speaking about the culture, I think that uh, the rarity for infinity and even, I think, a sense of how I feel my background maybe helps a little in that, you know, when there's Success has many colors and many avenues, and uh, where maybe a conventional premium car, you know, you might have a mix of old money or people who went the traditional road to success, maybe Harvard or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, success was 
going to happen. The decisions that they made were not safe because they're difficult, but it was more of a guaranteed path to the kind of conventional premium. Then. But I think in Infinity, we, we gravitate towards people who take a, a, a different road, that their journey to success uh, had some risk, had some, uh, you know, some diversion, and that that car should reflect that this person is an entrepreneur, this person is a risk taker, this person wants something that is completely unique. Y no se vayan que cuando regresemos vamos a tener la segunda parte de la entrevista con Alfonso Albaiza, el director de diseño global de la Infinity, con otros de sus conceptos sobre lo que es el futuro para la división de lujo de la Nissan, eh, dirigiéndola, como decíamos, desde allá de la sede en Tokio.